I'm going to talk about feet spacing today throughout the point. It's easy to get in this good ready position and have good feet spacing at the beginning of the point. But then what happens as the point goes longer and longer? We we'll talk about what not to do and then I'll talk about what to do to maintain good feet spacing. If our feet are a good distance apart, it allows us to easily move in any direction. First, I wanna talk about what not to do. So we're in the middle of a point. I have pretty good feet spacing here as I'm in this ready position, and say the ball comes down at my feet. What I see some people do is as this ball comes to say this foot, they'll move this foot out of the way to have room to swing. That's a good thing. The bad thing about this now, if my feet are this close together, it's more difficult for me to get low under these balls, and it's more difficult for me to move in any direction if I need to move more to get to that ball. Here's what that looks like. All right, so this is what you should not do, and this is what I see some people do. As that ball comes at my feet, people tend to move this one foot out of the way to give themselves room to swing. So it's not really a bad thing to do to move your foot out of the way. The bad part is if I move it over closer to my other foot, now it's much more difficult for me to get low and get under that ball, and I will end up dumping more of those in the net. It's also more difficult for me to move, so if I misjudged and I still need to move more, it's difficult for me to do that with both feet together. That's a bad foot spacing. We want to maintain better foot spacing in a point and not try and pull those feet together. Throughout the point, then, we want to maintain good spacing between our feet. We never want to pull one foot closer to the other. It's good to get our foot out of the way, but now I'm limited on how low I can get. Try this at home if I want to get here, much harder than if I'm here. The other thing is if my feet are this close together, it's hard for me to move and I may need to move more to actually hit that ball well. As I coach students and we drill, they will occasionally do this, pull their feet together, they won't get low, they'll dump that ball in the net because they never got under it to get enough lift. We'll talk about that, and one of the things that they will commonly say to me is, I didn't realize I was doing that, or I didn't know I was doing that. I recently put out a video about how I feel you need to record yourself while you're playing and then watch it back later. You will see yourself doing things you didn't know you were doing. This might be one of those things, right? If we're playing in a game and we're doing this, but we're unaware, we're never gonna be able to fix that. So I'll put the link to that video in the description box below. Go watch that video, go record yourself. In that video, I talk about what things to look for. This might be one of those. This might be the only way that you understand that you're doing this because if you can't feel yourself do this in a game, you're never gonna be able to fix it. If this ball's coming at my foot, either foot doesn't matter, or even in between my feet, I wanna move and give myself room to swing. So if moving my feet together is not the thing to do, what should I do? Two options here. First one is I can simply drop that foot back and out of the way. So my feet are apart and I'm in its ready position. The ball's coming at this foot. If I will take it and drop it back, now I have good room to swing and my feet are still apart. I can still move if I need to and I can get lower easier if I need to. Option number two then is if this ball is coming at this foot and I want to get this foot out of the way is I shuffle step out of the way and I move both feet. I just don't move this one over. I'm going to move them both over. So as I see this ball coming, I push off, shuffle step over, and now my spacing is still good. I can still get low and my body's out of the way. Here's what those two things look like. All right, so here's what those two methods look like. The first one, I'm simply going to drop this foot back and get it out of the way, but this helps me maintain good spacing. My feet are still far apart, meaning I can get lower easier, and I can still stay low. So ball comes into my foot. This could be on either side, or it could be if it comes between my shoes and I wanna get my feet out of the way, and I drop all the way back, give myself room to swing. The other option then is I'm gonna shuffle step out of the way to maintain good foot spacing. So it's shuffle away to get my foot away from this ball as it comes in. And then I can still stay low. My feet are spaced well apart. So if I need to keep moving, I can keep moving. Much better than if I do this, it's hard for me to get low and it's hard for me to be able to move. So I either wanna drop one foot back or I wanna shuffle away. Here we go and that allows me to keep good foot spacing 
for that shot to get low and get that ball up and over the net and be able to move during the point, like during that shot or later during that point. I demonstrated this back in no man's land, but really we should do this anywhere on the court. Anytime that we're tempted to just move one foot, we should go, I'm not gonna do that unless I'm dropping that foot out of the way. So if I'm up on the kitchen line and I'm dinking and this ball comes at my foot, I either drop that foot out of the way or I shuffle over out of the way and give myself room to swing if I'm back on the baseline returning serve, same thing. So if this ball is coming at my foot and I wanna get this foot out of the way, I do not wanna bring this over to my other foot and be like this, I can never get low and I've just lost all of my power. Uh, what I wanna do is drop this foot back or I wanna shuffle out of the way. So keep that in mind. If you don't know if you're doing that or not, again, I highly recommend you record yourself playing and then watch it back later. You will see that you're doing things that you didn't know you were doing and you're not doing things you thought you were doing. Again, the link to that video is down in the description box below. Thank you for watching. As always, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I would appreciate it. Thank you.